Well, for more on this, let's bring in Jenk Sidar, founder and CEO of Sidar Global Advisors. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So first of all, help us understand what these shell companies are and what people use them for. Shell companies are non-trading business entities and they may have some legitimate functions in business. They can be used to raise funds, they can be used to, for mergers and acquisition operations, or they can basically use to hide the ownership of the company. And it may be totally a legitimate and legal way of doing business. However, there may be some other applications of shell companies which may be problematic, especially when the, the politicians and uh, some tax evaders came into the equation. That may be a problem then. Now, with that being said, as you said, private companies, private individuals can use these for, for perfectly legal reasons. So why is this particular leak causing such an uproar? Actually, I think it's a good sign that the, these tax havens are also creating an unfair situation or competitiveness for companies. Like Why these large that? companies, like multinationals, they have abilities to open those accounts using companies like Mossack Fonseca and use these offshore law firms to incorporate in these places. So you see like global inequality increasing because larger players in the market are able to open those offshore accounts and pay in some cases, zero taxes, uh, depending on their jurisdictions. Uh, but small and medium-sized companies in operating in different parts of the world, the US, England, China, UK, it doesn't matter, they are subject to taxing. So I think this, is, this creates kind of an unfair in a cool system. So even if they, it may be totally legal or legitimate to have those operational tax savings or they use the gray areas very well, it has some uh, repercussions uh, for business world, I will say. Now, with that being said, a lot of people are still saying this is the tip of the iceberg, which is quite galling considering 2.6 terabytes of information was released. How, how extensive do you think this could be? <laughs> exactly, and 2.6 terabyte of data is larger than the accumulation of all the leaks happened last 10 years. So talk about Snowden leaks, WikiLeaks, and all these scandals. So we are talking about a data leak larger than the accumulation of those uh, scandals. So, and again, there's a very structured, very professional way of analyzing this data. There's a group of experienced journalists looking at the data in a systematic way. And since there are like 11.3 million documents, it will take some time to create stories because they're not dumping the data. I think they are showing very responsible journalism here because they could easily upload the data set to a web page and let people play with it. But that would also put very critical, inf crucial information of regular people like for risky positions. That's why they're not leaking the information data like hacker groups would do like in the past. They're keeping the data sets and they're writing stories around this data. That's why it will take some time because we're not gonna see hundreds of re reports in a day. Now, with that being said, you also have a lot of these multinational companies saying, look, I'm paying my fair share, but what's considered fair, it seems to be in the eye of the beholder. So what can these companies do or what should governments be doing? Again, it's all about jurisdictions of different countries, right? We know companies like Apple, Microsoft, they have offshore accounts and they, 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 this is not a hidden fact. There are $32 trillion accumulated or used in uh, offshore accounts. And this is fully legitimate. And they publish those numbers in, this, in their financial statements. And to their support, basically they say, we are a global company, so we are operating in hundreds of countries. So we need to put our money in, like, in places that can, we can access easily. Right. And we, we need to use it for logistical ways and because we have multiple operations. So it may make sense, but as I mentioned, it, it cannot be a privilege to multinational corporations. I mean, if there is, so that's why also in today's age, when the global elite has been and the establishment has been under attack, we see increasing anti-establishment trend in politics, in the US, in Europe, in other right. places. So it only fuels that anger on the people on the street. People don't, the people paying 30% rent, making $30,000, $40,000, they see multi-billion dollar companies paying right couple, two, three percent. And, and, they, and they, they see it as unfair. Yeah. And just quickly, given what's in these Panama Papers so far, can we realistically expect any changes from, from governments when it comes to protecting people and more transparency? We, we may and we may not. Actually, it depends on what really will come from it. I mean, some countries will 
uh, just treat those documents as like a fake propaganda that aim to topple their governments. So they're not going to take any measure against that. But it may create some like a social pressure from the public. Like in Iceland, I mean, we see people protesting on the street, even though those are only allegations yet. There are no right. cases. But still, people are prote protesting and they're asking for uh, answers from their politicians. So, and this may trigger some debate about uh, regulation of the tax havens in, in next years. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Cenk Stida, a pleasure. Thank you for Thank joining you. us.